Now for the second half of this video, I wanna focus on a particular question dealing with a bomb calorimeter. And one thing that you might notice at first is that bomb calorimeter questions have gotta be pretty long because they have to contain a lot of information. So let's read this one out. 1.112 grams of a hydrocarbon fuel source are combusted in a bomb calorimeter. The calorimeter hardware has a heat capacity equal to 1.580 kilojoules per degree Celsius and is filled with 1.900 liters of water, which has a specific heat capacity equal to 4.184 joules per grams degrees Celsius. You measure a change in temperature equal to 2.865 degrees Celsius. And here's where the questions come in. Question A is what is the change in internal energy delta U for the combustion of this 1.112 grams of this fuel? Answer in kilojoules. Question B is going to be after further analysis of the hydrocarbon, the molecular weight of the fuel source is found to be equal to 86 grams per mole. What is the molar internal energy of combustion or delta U of reaction in kilojoules per mole? So we're gonna use this equation down at the bottom. Q cal is equal to MCS delta T plus C delta T. And we're going to flip our perspective into the system and then do a little bit of stoichiometry at the end in order to come up with this answer. So our task here is gonna start number one primarily with finding the heat absorbed by your calorimeter. So Q cal is equal to M C S delta T plus C delta T. And I like to, as I said in the very beginning, first and foremost, annotate what these two terms represent. So my term right here is gonna be my water component. And right here is gonna be my hardware component. And then what I like to do is just make sure that I have all the terms ready to plug into this equation. And one of the important things is that I want each of these terms to be in the same energy unit. And so I'm looking for a final answer in kilojoules. And so I'm going to decide right now that I want to have kilojoules plus kilojoules equals kilojoules. And that way, when I add them all up and flip the sign, I will be in the exact correct units in order to answer this question. But let's look at all the terms that we need. We need mass of the water. We need the heat capacity of the water. We need a change in temperature of the water. And then we need a heat capacity of the hardware and a change in temperature of the hardware. So the mass, this is gonna be a little bit tricky and I can tell you that this is a very common mistake that students make. The only mass directly given in this question is the mass of the hydrocarbon fuel source. But I annotated this at the very beginning to avoid confusion there. I wanna make sure that I'm looking for the mass of the water and I'm definitely not dealing with the mass of the hydrocarbon fuel source because that is my system. And I'm measuring right now my surroundings. We're gonna use that 1.112 grams a little bit later. But where is my mass? Well, I know I have 1.900 liters of water. I know that there's one gram of water per milliliter. So I can really read that volume as 1,900 grams of water. My heat capacity is given, but remember what I said, I really want this to be in units of kilojoules. So I'm gonna write this as 4.184 times 10 to the negative three kilojoules per gram degrees C. And then my change in temperature is given as a 2.865 degrees C. For my hardware component, I'm already given my heat capacity in terms of kilojoules. So I'm just gonna keep it like that. 1.580 kilojoules per degree C. And then my change in temperature, like the water, is gonna be 2.865 degrees C. Now, I like to be very, very careful throughout this whole process. And so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show exactly how all of these units cancel out in order to get my final energy value. So I'm gonna take my mass, 1900 grams, 
times my specific heat capacity, 4.184 times 10 to the negative 3 kilojoules per grams degrees Celsius times my change in temperature, 2.865 degrees C. I'm going to add this to my hardware component. So 1.580 kilojoules per degree C. And then I'm going to multiply that by the change in temperature, 2.865 degrees C. And then I want to show grams, cancels with grams, degrees Celsius with degrees Celsius, degrees Celsius with degrees Celsius, and I end up with just kilojoules plus kilojoules. I'm going to get a final answer. QCal is equal to 27 point about three zero kilojoules. Now I'm going to store this number on my calculator so that I can use it for part B. But for part A, this is absolutely going to be the value I'm going to use. However, I want to reflect on this. One of the most important points is that we are running a combustion reaction. Would this value right here make sense right here? And hopefully you would say absolutely not because it needs to be negative. So let's not forget the all important step two and the final step here is to understand that QCal is equal to negative QV and QV just conceptually is equal to delta U. And so all I need to do is take this value and put a negative sign. So I put negative 27.30 kilojoules. And that's going to be my answer right here. So delta U for the 1.112 grams, so for this process, is equal to negative 27.30 kilojoules. Now, part B is not a particularly challenging step, but unfortunately it requires us to go all the way back to fundamentals of chemistry in order to figure out how to deal with converting between kilojoules per 1.112 grams to kilojoules per mole of this hydrocarbon. So let's start on step B by writing out what would be on our calculator. So delta U is equal to that negative 27.3 Three zero, but now I want to carry over all these digits just to get as precise of an answer as possible. Two three zero four kilojoules. Now I want to show you two different ways of getting to the right answer. One geared more towards units and just understanding what you're doing here, and then the other they can actually use an equation to get you exactly what you want. The first one, and this is my preferred method, is just to see that what we're doing here is we're converting from kilojoules over to kilojoules per mole. So if I knew how many moles I have in this combustion reaction, it's a very easy thing. All I have to do is divide by the number of moles and I get right to the correct answer. In order to do that, I need to use the molar mass and then this grams value that was provided in the very beginning. And I know from fundamental chemistry that 1.112 grams, the mass that I have, can be divided by the molecular weight, so 86 grams per mole, to get me the number of moles, which in this case would be about 0 0.01290233 moles. And so all I have to do is divide this value that I have by that number right there. And what that's going to get me is the actual answer, which would be at about negative 2,012 kilojoules per mole. Now, if that's just not very satisfying to you, because this is thermodynamics, and you don't want to be thinking about all of that information from way back in the beginning of the semester. Well, if you want a nice equation that will work for you, delta U for this particular process is going to be equal to N delta U of the reaction. 
And what you have to see here is that this can be any amount based on any value n. So this is just kilojoules, this is moles, and this is kilojoules per mole. So in the end, you're doing the exact same thing. You're just using an equation to show you exactly how it works. So we got our delta u value, and we're dividing it by n to give us delta u of reaction. In the end, with this method here, you would be doing the exact same thing. You would still be dividing by the molecular weight to get your n value, and you'd be dividing that away from delta u to get your delta u of reaction. But understand that putting it into an equation might help to conceptualize the whole process. So let's do a really quick recap of what we did here. We identified the two different components of this big calorimetry equation. We said that we have to take into account the heat flow into the water and the heat flow into the hardware we broke apart every single component here. And then we plugged it into the equation. We determined that what we were solving for was the heat flow into the surrounding. So we took the negative sign of that to get us to an answer. That answer, while it properly depicted the experiment that we did, it did not fully give us a value that we could store in a textbook or a data table. So we converted the delta U for that process to a delta U per mole of reaction. And the way we did that is we simply divided by the number of moles that we had to get us a final and very valuable quantity of negative 2,112 kilojoules per mole.